we are going to talk about a theology of digital ministry. Now, for me, I like to think of a theology of digital ministry in three particular ways, framing metaphors, approaches, nuances. Uh, so they are, naturally, airstreams, the Little Mermaid, and campfires. So first, let's talk about airstreams. I'm a little biased because A, I love them, and B, my wife and I, we have one. Uh, actually, back in 2019, we moved into one full time. Uh, we were living in New York City at the time, and we said, what if we do this adventure? And we began traveling and living full time in a 28 foot Airstream. There we are. I'm the one with the face. My wife's in the one jumping, and the guy in the middle is named Patrick, who sold it to us. Phenomenal. We loved it. We lived in it full time with two of our cats. Now we have three plus two other humans called kids. Uh, and we traveled around mainly we made it from New York up to Michigan where we have family down to Florida because Michigan winters are cold. Then we zipped back up to Michigan when there was this little thing happening in March 2020. Remember that? Uh, so we got ourselves and we've been in Michigan ever since. And then we uh, had some kids. So we decided, you know, we don't want the big Airstream. Let's shift it to a small Airstream. So as our family was growing, our Airstream was shrinking. We stopped doing the full-time Airstream life and we started going part-time in the summers and whenever it was warm enough and going to state parks. And, and now we're still doing it, actually. Here we are just uh, a couple weeks ago with our two boys, that's Kai and Lauren, having a fantastic time out in a campground. Now there's a lot of things besides just showing you family photos. The point of this is what an Airstream, really any travel trailer, but specifically what we found in our current Airstream, a 16 foot, super tiny, one of the smallest they make. What we've noticed about this is it really allows us to go anywhere and when we're in that anywhere to really maneuver the thing exactly where we want it. There is a nimbleness to the thing we have. It's got wheels and a hitch. So you just attach that front part to your vehicle and away you go. It is not stuck in one location. In, uh, in the way uh, of RV culture, they often refer to um, people who live in houses as sticks and bricks. You're kind of stuck in one place, but people who in, the, in these kinds of living situations have a different mobility about them. Rather than just being stuck where you are, you have the ability to adapt and shift and go wherever you need. That is one of the huge advantages of an airstream. Now, theologically, I thought this was theology class. Yes, we're getting there. Hmm, not being stuck in one place, the ability for it to move wherever it's needed, to, to shift, to be as the people move, the thing moves. You don't have to go to that one location, but the location travels with you. I'm talking about Airstreams, but I'm also talking about the tabernacle, not just tents in general, the tabernacle. For the cloud of the Lord was on the tabernacle by day, and fire was in the cloud by night, before the eyes of all the house of Israel at each stage of their journey. Oh, this, this is what I think is a starting point for a theology of digital ministry. Understanding, just looking at the scriptures we have, you know, in our Christian tradition and the way in which the, these people and the story we see in Exodus and beyond, where they were traveling through these wild places, the wilderness, and rather than having a fixed thing, God was this mobile experience, this experience that went with them in all the ways and places they were going. And it's interesting, you know, just reading, reading the book, it's when they really moved away from this flexibility to a fixed location that uh, some of their problems seemed to kind of really settle in a bit more. Uh, you know, nothing against buildings in, in the world of churches today, but uh, <laughs> when, we when we see in the story is... Uh, the building, the fixed reality, the static nature became a problematic thing. Uh, they, they wanted it. It became divisive. They ended up in exile largely and then went to rebuild it. And, and they never returned to that mobile experience. Although maybe we could say that, you know, the experience of the Holy Spirit in our Christian tradition is a bit more of that tabernacling experience. Anyway, I'm getting ahead in the book. However, the idea here is that the tabernacle experience of God was an experience of God that wasn't bound by geography, but was able to move and travel and be where the people went. And that to me is an essential starting point when we think about digital ministry, whether we're talking about airstreams or the tabernacle. To me, the starting point for my theology of digital ministry is recognizing that digital ministry is not bound to a building 
or static location, but it can go with people wherever they are and wherever they go. Oh, this, this is an essential starting point for how we think about digital ministry. You're, you're not stuck. There's not a, can you come here? But it has this movement built into it, this ability to be where people are, however they are, through all of these digital means and technologies. So, so that's number one of our theology of digital ministry. All right, number two is, dun, 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 naturally, the Little Mermaid. <laughs> Doesn't everyone think about these things theologically? Uh, okay, so The Little Mermaid, you know, was one of the first Disney cartoon movies I have consciousness of uh, back in the day when they were still making things with hand-drawn animation and all that fun stuff. Uh, and this movie has lots we can learn from it. You know, you know what is the fun of being under the sea, uh, all the different ways you can use a fork. But when I think about it theologically, one aspect of The Little Mermaid that has continued to just impact and form how I understand what the church is called to do, regardless of a digital expression, just this experiment called church, it's this one. This, this seems like an obvious starting point, right? I want to be where the people are. This is foundational, it seems, to this experiment called church. Oh, wait, that sounds a lot like something else that we see in the book of John. Hmm. Hmm. The word became flesh and lived among us. I want to be where the people are. Now, this is just a way of talking about what does it mean to be incarnational. And to me, an essential aspect of digital ministry and thinking about a theology of digital ministry is recognizing that this whole endeavor of ministry done in digital spaces and ways is the ability in our world today to be incarnational. Now, a couple of things on this, one kind of practical and the other maybe a little more philosophical, scrutinizing some language here. Uh, first, practically. This is just what churches have always been called to do. This is not a new invention because of the internet. This is just what this thing called church was always about, being where you are with the people around you. That's it. That's the job. Uh, that's what we see modeled in Jesus, and it's what we see modeled in the Little Mermaid. I want to be where the people are. The Word became flesh and made its dwelling among us. Which, by the way, that word dwelling there is tabernacle, tabernacled among us. Ah. Okay, so practically speaking, say you have a favorite coffee shop or bar or something, and you're a pastor at a local church, but all your congregants go to this other coffee shop or bar, I think you're supposed to go where the people are. You don't just be like, no, I prefer mine where it has these nice sifter glasses or this pour over coffee. No, go to the whatever coffee shop, go to the place, go to the be where the people are. And I think the same is true digitally in these online spaces. Where are your congregants showing up? What are the digital spaces they are in? And what does it mean then for you to be where the people are? So for me, I, uh, I, I don't like Facebook. I had a moment, it was fun way back when it first started and then it's turned into a thing and what, it's, it's maybe still slightly above the platform formerly known as Twitter, but Facebook and I have never been like, yes. Um, there was a time when I was all in on it and then I was like, eh, no, I'm just gonna switch my profile to a page so people who wanna know what I'm up to can still in, hear from it and engage, but I don't have to do the uh, keeping up with people's lives on Facebook thing. I was tired of pokes and birthdays and all that. Then I shifted and I was pastoring a church in New York City. Um, I was part of a fantastic team. Uh, and a congregant said to someone, hey, thanks so much for praying for me the other day. And it was like, wait, where? How, what happened? Tell me about this. How did, how did we miss this at the church? Oh, I posted it on Facebook. And within minutes, you know, I had a dozen congregants responding and saying they were going to be praying for me. Within a day, it was my, my comment section was flooded with support. And I realized, oh, I didn't see any of that because I'm not going to that coffee shop. I'm over here in my land and that's where the people are. So whether or not it's my favorite platform, if congregants are there, if the people I'm called to serve are there, I need to go there too. I need to be where the people are. I want to be where the people are. That's the job. So a, a very just practical aspect is where are your people? Where are the people you're called to serve? And you need to show up in that space too. So that might lead to, you know, the need to do an ethnographic survey of asking your people, where are they showing up in these digital spaces? So you can spend time and energy being present in those spaces as well. Maybe learning those spaces and understanding the co context and the culture. 
Um, you can't just assume you know the etiquette. A lot of white straight men assume that about the world in general, but spoiler alert, we don't know it all. Uh, so how do we intentionally show up in the spaces our congregants are already in? Where are they already at? We just need to walk through the door, tap on the app, whatever it might be, and be there too. That's the job, being where they are. Now, the other nuance of this, this is the less practical, more philosophical thinking. Um, you might say that's not incarnational because incarnate, carne means flesh. So this digital stuff isn't being incarnational. And I would argue, okay, semantically speaking, correct. Incarnational means in the flesh, the flesh and blood being in the same physical space. But at its essence, I think the idea of incarnation was less about bodies and more about presence. And that's just, at that time, the best way they knew to be present. This is world before uh, FaceTime and Zoom and all the ways we can see and connect with one another today. So I think we must recognize that in order to be intentionally present with one another, we have to engage in these online spaces. And that is an incarnational presence. My flesh showing up in a space so your flesh can experience it. Caveat here, we're all in person. There's no distinction between being in person or online. The people joining online are also persons. We're also embodied. We just don't have to happen to have our body quite as close into proximity as yours. So uh, incarnational ministry is what stems from Ariel and Jesus, two good advice givers, I think. Uh, although don't follow Ariel's advice on going to sell your voice to a, a, a sea creature named Ursula. That's another tangent. Okay being where the people are, showing up where and how they are. This, this is why it's important to, for churches to have a presence on these digital spaces. And I'll just say this, because I think most of you all with me here are probably a bit more on the progressive, mainline-ish end of Christianity. We can't just let the conservative evangelicals run the internet and claim all the space. They've, they've done that enough. They've co-opted the word Christian and evangelism and all these things that, that are, it, it's in my book too. Come on, I got the same source material and we can't just disband the internet and let them define what it all means. So being incarnational means showing up intentionally as a presence in these spaces because people are in these spaces. One of my friends, Bethany Peerbold, Rev Bethany on TikTok and other platforms. You should follow her for sure. Um, early in the pandemic, she was kind of lurking on TikTok and just seeing the space. Um, she was a youth pastor at the time at a church near Detroit. And some of her students in her youth group shared some theological things. And she's like, where'd you hear that? Because it was kind of not really in the way of thinking theologically that her and her faith community were cultivating. Uh, and they were like, oh, I heard it on TikTok from some pastor. And she was like, oh, there are much more conservative voices on these platforms. And my congregants are learning from them. So she said, what if I just showed up modeling a different way of looking at theology and God? And it was so widely needed and received. She has now a probably about 300,000 person congregation on TikTok. Uh, but it was a way of engaging her particular students and a broader audience to just be in these places because People are in these places looking, asking questions, um, seeking, searching. They might not walk in the physical doors of your church, but they're probably going to swipe through the digital doors of all of these places. So what is the digital cathedral you are cultivating and inviting people to experience? Oh, all of this, once again, roots itself around the Little Mermaid. I want to be where the people are because digital ministry is incarnational ministry. It's meeting people where they are. Digital ministry is not just a billboard or a marketing plan or a way of pointing people, come to this event, go to the building, do this thing. No, digital ministry is meeting people in the digital space, being present where and how they are in that moment. It's having the experience that happens right there. The, the TikTok, the Instagram reel is not saying go someplace else. It's meeting you in that space. What does it mean to show up in these spaces fully and intentionally. Whew, I, I, I could talk about this stuff for a while. That's, that's why we're doing this. Okay. Uh, and third, number three, digital ministry is like a campfire. This, this one, we'll, we'll get to the Bible part of it. I promise there's something here, but just campfires. Start with this. Imagine you are out walking through a countryside. I'm in the Midwest. Put yourself here on a nice flat Midwest road. You see over in the field 
a little campfire, a bonfire going on. Interesting. Now, if there's a circle of chairs and a group of people around it, I might be like, oh, I want to go take a closer look and have a seat. If it's just the campfire and no one gathered around it, you should probably run. That's kind of creepy. The point being, a campfire has the ability to be this thing that we can gather around. When I think of creating stuff for the internet, online content, online anything, to me, it's a digital campfire. It's not just burning for the sake of burning. I don't just make it to make it. It's designed with that intention of people experiencing it and gathering and having the, the possibility of a deeper connection together. Now, you can also just sit at a campfire by yourself or talking to nobody or just in your own space staring at the flame and that that's great that's totally welcome that's a beautiful way to experience a campfire uh, but it also gives the ability to just be present with people in a different way around a shared experience someone has a guitar people tell stories cook some marshmallows get out of the way of the smoke moving whatever the experience might be the campfire makes it possible to have a various different experiences a variety of different ways to experience the thing and all the people who are there around the thing together. So I think that the stuff we make in online spaces are digital campfires, allowing for that. Now, now where does this get theologically? Don't worry, I've got that in my back pocket as well. The Book of Acts, right there, chapter two. This is moments after the Pentecost experience they all had. They devoted themselves, that is the new people who were in, into this new way of being a human following Jesus and the disciples. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Now that word fellowship there, it's the word koinonia, Greek word, fancy. You've probably heard of it before. It means fellowship, community. This is actually the first time that word is used to describe this thing called the church. And we think of it now as that's what church is, right? It's community, it's people. Well, this is its origin. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and that community, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And it's worth noting, I think, that it wasn't just community for the sake of community. It, it gathered around something. There was some sort of campfire that people could gather around. There was a thing that they could kind of center themselves around. And around that thing is what let them have connections with one another. And so the stuff we make online, the videos, the, the whatever, the, the blog posts, the email newsletters, the, the Instagram pictures, the live streams, all of those things, I think, can be digital campfires. We're not just making something with this ambition of becoming, you know, the next Mr. Beast, although Mr. Beast is doing some cool stuff in the world. But the point of what we do, I think, as churches in digital ministry is making these things so that people can have some sort of an experience, maybe even together. Rubbing shoulders or discovering someone new who's sitting across from that campfire and making a connection that will impact them far beyond the thing you've made and put into the online world. Uh, and, and really, I would just land this by saying then that digital ministry, uh, it creates spaces for people to gather and reflect, to grow and connect. It's a thing that we can gather around and see one another and learn more about ourselves, this community, and the, way in, the ways in which God might be showing up in our lives and our world. So to bring us home, the theology of digital ministry, three things. Airstreams. It, it's flexible. It goes where you are. It's not stuck in one place. It's got some mobility to it. Little Mermaid. I want to be where the people are. Being incarnational, showing up in those ways and places. And a campfire. It's something that we can gather around and have a different kind of connection, meeting others, ourselves, and God along the way. <laughs>